Yo, this is uh, obviously Stover, uh, but I always want to make sure that you have enough information to really grasp concepts. So I'm going to make these brief little videos that you can like just go back to, refer to, or lecture-like, but really they're um, more about just making sure you got the information at hand. So uh, in this one, we're just going to talk about cell theory. Okay, so just like every other thing in science, remember this, science builds upon discovery and experiment. It builds upon each other. So uh, cell the theory is no different. So uh, also remember a theory in science is something that's been tested and proven uh, numerous times. Okay, so the cell theory grew out of the work of many scientists. Okay, it built upon the work of various scientists. And specifically, it was centered around the improvement of the microscope. At this point, um, the microscope had yet to be developed. And uh, this guy right here, Mr. Hook, Robert Hook, um, interesting dude. He uh, was the first to identify cells and name them. So Hook looked at uh, some cork, which is tree bark back in the day. And he noticed that there were these square type cells. Um, and so he even thought that they looked like prison cells or um, cells that maybe monks in monasteries would be a part of. Uh, and then uh, after him comes Lewin Hook uh, or Leon Hook. Uh, basically, he's a scientist that observed live cells and observed them in greater detail than Hook. He basically took the uh, microscope that Hook was using and made it better. OK, so he was looking at these live cells much better than Hook was. Uh, in fact, Hook was looking at um, dead cells from tree bark. Uh, and all he seen was the decayed portion of the cell. So Lee and Hook come, up, come around and, and developed and made the microscope better and uh, looked at live cells in greater detail. Then you have Schleiden. Schleiden, that's fun to say. Anyway, he concluded that plants are made of cells. And then you move on to Schwann. And Schwann is the scientist who concluded that all living things are made of cells, plants and animals. So all living things made of cells by this guy named Schwann. And then you have Virchow. Uh, and he's the scientist that proposed that all cells come from other cells. So with that said, let's just jump back in here to the notes that uh, we went over. Um, and so we see right off the bat that we have cell theory and it's composed of three specific parts. All living things are made of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life and all cells come from other cells. Uh, and these are pretty self-explanatory kind of intuitive statements. All living things, everything we see living, and even the things that we look at that are, you know, decaying or dead, like if I was to look at a desk in the room here, uh, it would still have those same kind of cell-looking shapes to them um, because all living and formerly living things are made of cells. And then cells are the basic unit of life. What that means is that inside of this nucleus, uh, you have all of the genetic information necessary uh, to recreate or to create, uh, an, uh, you know, another organism. And so you have this being the basic unit of life comes down to, uh, the cell. Okay. Now you might say if cells are the basic unit of life, why, I mean, you have these other smaller units inside that seem more basic than a cell. Well, the thing about it is, is that if you took the, say, if you took the Golgi body, which is right here, if you took the Golgi body out, it wouldn't live anymore. It would just die. So the Golgi body wouldn't exist anymore. If you took a nucleus out of a cell, it wouldn't exist anymore. Or if you took a um, centrosome out of the, sh of the cell, it wouldn't exist anymore. Same way for uh, the rough ER and the smooth ER. They wouldn't exist. So the cells uh, are the basic unit of life because they uh, they provide that protective surroundings for all of the other smaller uh, organelles in the cell. So let's see, let's look at this. 
So although all living things are made of cells, which is the first part of cell theory, uh, you have multiple types. You have unicellular cells. Uh, it's composed of one cell. Then you have these multicellular organisms like dogs, you and I, um, and some, you know, some other types of uh, prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells. But um, you have these unicellular and multicellular organisms. And multicellular, obviously, that's intuitive, is composed of many cells. Just rolling right through cell theory. Uh, over here, you have two uh, pictures, one of a prokaryotic cell and one of a eukaryotic cell. Now, you can look at these and just tell which one is more complex. OK, um, this one is not us. This one is not you. This one is not me. This one could be. Um, this is uh, generally no, you know, notated as an animal cell, more complex. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in just a little while. Cells are the most basic unit of life. Part two to this whole cell theory. It's the smallest part of an organism that's still capable of all of life's processors. Remember, I talked about the DNA. This actually is DNA floating around, chromosomes, uh, inside of the cell itself, but no nucleus, right? Remember that prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. But they're still very diverse. So you have two types, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Remember those for the next slide. So, uh, continuing with cell theory, let's just go through these and compare these. Uh, a prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus. Prokaryotic cell, no nucleus. Uh, prokaryotic cell does not have membrane-bound organelles. And let's just go back to this real quick. When I'm talking about membrane-bound organelles, this whole cell is a membrane-bound cell. But each uh, organelle in the cell has a membrane that surrounds it. Each organelle has a membrane that surrounds it. So that is why we call it membrane bound organelles. Okay. So, uh, the way that a prokaryotic cell divides is through binary fission. Um, the size of a prokaryotic cell is basically all the time unicellular. Cell walls, yes, they're made of peptoglycan. Uh, and then the example of a prokaryotic cell, which is a basic um, cell, is going to be bacteria. Okay, now let's move over to eukaryotic. Eukaryotic does have a nucleus. Uh, it does have membrane-bound organelles. And then the separate, the separation or the, the way the cell divides and creates other cells is through mitosis. That's the process of cellular division. Now, uh, eukaryotic cells can be um, multicellular or unicellular, unicellular. Um, it could just be one cell, okay, uh, the size of an organism. could just be one cell, like say, for example, a uh, red blood cell, okay, or multicellular like you and I, right, or a skin cell, which is one cell. Or um, the cells like on puppy dog up here, right? Could be uh, multicellular or could be simply, you know, um, unicellular like a single blood cell or a single skin cell. The cell walls? Uh, no. Uh, the only fungi and plants uh, have cell walls and those are made of chitin or cellulose. Okay, uh, and different examples of this is going to be plants, fungi, protists, and animals. These are all going to be labeled as eukaryotic cells. All right, so one more slide and we're done with cell theory. So cell theory, although there are two main types of cells, all cells have these four specific things to them. One is going to be genetic material, which is housed inside of the nucleus. Uh, and uh, then it has cytoplasm. All cells have this, uh, that's that green uh, jello, jelly-like substance floating around in here. That's also this blue internal substance that's going to be all throughout this cell, this cylinder type, um, spherical type cell here. Cytoplasm, it's kind of like this jelly membrane, but we'll talk about that later. Then you have a cell membrane. All cells have a cell membrane. Not all cells have a cell wall. Only plants and fungi have cell walls. But they all have a cell membrane. Okay, A membrane is made of phospholipids or fats. It's a bilayer that keeps stuff in or keeps stuff out. 
Okay, let stuff in or let stuff out. And then ribosomes. Uh, proteins are a big deal and ribosomes create proteins. And so all of the cells have genetic material, cytoplasm, a cell membrane, and ribosomes. Let's do a quick summary of cell theory. Um, this whole theory was brought about by your people over here, um, I don't know where it went, but right here, boom. You have um, Hook, you have Lowen Hook, you have Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow. And each of these guys had a part to play in the development of cell theory. And uh, at the end, uh, this one is obviously the most controversial. All cells come from other cells. And I'll let you think about why that's controversial. But uh, this is cell theory in a nutshell. All living things are made of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life. And all cells come from other cells. So I hope this helps. And uh, if I talk fast, it's only because I'm trying to get these done so that you're not watching these forever. Anyway, I hope it helps. I'll see you.